blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Preachers, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. His people to celebrate. Victory is our new song. Success is our new language. Testimony that we, who we are not a people, He has made His own people. I pray you open your ears this afternoon. And wherever you are, this day is going to be a day of divine revelation to give you divine revolution. I believe that and that's why I'm here. Father, honor your word. 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 And let your power circumcise every heart. And let your name be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just shake hands with one person near you. Say welcome to a miracle day. Say it again. I said, try it again. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Whenever I come here, 
My heart is lifted because the servant of God is grooming a new army of possibility believers. When you are not inspiring, you are inspiring people. Thank you musicians for your kindness. I believe that if your gift is to help to inspire people, you never inspire them. But all who are not inspired and given hope for living, you find them always going down every time. When you are not on a course to success, you are either at standstill or you are moving backward. And life is too precious to throw away. How many of you know what I'm talking about? If you don't improve on yourself, you diminish. Let me repeat that. Anytime you don't see yourself growing, don't you think you are standing still? You are going down. Because when you stop growing, you start dying. And when you stop moving forward, you start going backward. Oh, you say, I'm still where I was. God never made life like that. You woke up this morning, you saw what is called six o'clock. Even when you stand and begin to look at the watch, time doesn't stand because you are standing. I hope somebody heard what I'm saying. If it's okay, uh, it's now nine minutes past twelve. One hour's time, because you are still on the same spot, the clock will not remain at nine minutes past twelve. Did you hear what I'm saying? Time pass you by if you stop moving. Did somebody hear what I'm saying? Then in Christianity, we were taught satisfaction in nothingness. Preachers tell you, you're on your way to heaven, no need to do anything on earth. Well, if in this world you live, you are not a plus, you are a minus. If you are not helping yourself before others, let me use the word yourself first. To say, I used to be there. Now I'm here. Thank God I'm going here. You are going to die there thinking that the world is waiting for you. Life and time wait for nobody. That's number one. I arrived in America last Saturday. I, I was in America last Saturday. Last Sunday. I went to a church where a wonderful attendance, bigger than many, many churches. I think at least there were about 3,000 people there. And they spent the first two hours celebrating the ugliness of the past. And I was invited as a guest speaker. They were going to please me by telling me this is what we experienced in the past. I was boiling. Oh God. We are not serving the God of past. We are serving the God of the now. Why spend time looking at your skin if you can improve on your skill? Why will you spend time to tell me your grandfather walked in banana farm when you can climb sky campus. Yeah. Why do you spend three hours trying to please me to tell me you were once a slave now that you are free? Please listen to me everybody. Black or white, you have your story. But anytime you look back, you should thank God for where you are. Somebody shout hallelujah. I was not as privileged as you to be born in a civilized nation. When I was born, I was so sickly, I was thrown to dustbins. But 58 years later, 
kings are nine. Now sit down and discuss. So every time I look at 58 years back, I remind God, you did good from bad. And you brought light out of darkness. Whenever you think of where you were and where you are now, only make it a reference of testimony that things are getting better. Are you hearing me? When they finally gave me the microphone, I said, I wish I could kill you, Pastor. I wish I could kill you because if you are teaching your children how to look back, they will never look forward. And no man who loves you should teach you how terrible the past was, but how terrific the future will be. If you hear what I'm saying, say hallelujah. When I first came to this ministry, there were less than 150 people. I took the microphone, I preached to 3,000 people from 150. And I told this man, this is the smallest day in your history. Somebody say hallelujah. I said, tomorrow is a better day. Watch out. Ten years from now, you go to India, you go to Asia, you go to Africa. I said, as far as Africa is concerned, I'm only giving you six months to follow me. Go as an old man and come back as a new man. He followed me. First time in his life. He stood before 80,000 people after talking to 150 people. Find someone who will tell you where you are now is the worst place you've ever been, but you are going to a better place. Somebody say hallelujah. Find someone that will take you from, from ordinary to an extraordinary life. You must stop thinking of funerary, slavery, to think of prosperity and advancement in life. A few months ago, to God be the glory, I, I, I'm not, please don't quote me wrong. A black man went to the moon for the first time. His father never went to the moon. That's the man I want to be like. Oh, I'm glad you didn't hear what I'm saying. I want to follow a man who now go to the moon than a man who remind me where I was in banana farm. Did you hear what I'm saying? Look for a man who will tell you. Thank God for this wonderful church. For three years time, this will be children's church. Obama kekelebo. Shalaba hakase. Hilabama. Chilabama hakaso. Find someone you tell. I just bought a five-bedroom house. For toilet and bath. And he said, that's where my driver stays. Oh God. I wish you heard what I'm saying. Not the man you tell. I just bought a five bedroom house. For toilet and bath. I said, are you still a Christian? You sure you're born again? Find a man you tell. I came to church just now. With town's car. I said, I came with Mercedes. Find someone who is not envious of what good God has done for you. Find someone you tell. I just came from Paraguay. I just came from Uruguay. I just came from Argentina. I just came from Indonesia. My crowd was 100,000. He said, That was my Sunday school class last week. That's whom you need. A man you need to follow is a man that forces you constantly to improve on where you are. Hold your ears. Say, I hear you, sir. I didn't hear you. Say it loud. Look for someone whom you say, believe God with me for a second home. And he will say, when are you buying the third one? I hope what I'm about to share with you will help you. New wind is blowing. And that sound is of good things. God has a better tomorrow for you to replace today.
Someone say hallelujah. Turn with me to First Kings this morning. First King chapter 18. How many of you would have loved to be alive when Paul was here on earth? Let me see your hand. You would have been very glad if you were here when Paul was here. A few hands. I tell you, we were born again. How many would have loved to be here when Jesus was here? I tell you, we were born again. You mean you are not a Christian? How many of you are happy? That today is better than their day. Oh, Lord. You know, every time Paul looked to Delaware today, or looked to Washington, he said, I wish I was here today. I wish I was patient. Why was I born so early? We live in a better generation. God gave me a message this week. We are the proof today of his power of yesterday. Turn to the book of First Kings chapter 18. Read with me from verse 34. Elijah said unto them, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass. At the time of offering of the evening sacrifice. Say with me, offering, evening, sacrifice. Repeat it by yourself. That Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, let it be known this day. That thou art God in Israel. And that I am thy servant. And that I have done all these things. At thy word. Stand to your feet. Say it loud and clear. Let it be known this day. That there is God. Of the past. In the now. For my sake. Say it again. Let it be known. This day, that there is God of the past in the now for my sake. Now put your eyes on me. Put your eyes on me. If the God of the past is not evidenced in the now, we are going to be borrowing joy from few who are happy healing from those few who are well salvation from few who are saved elijah said god of abraham god of isaac god of jacob let it be known today you existed in the past or past. But you are better in the better and better in the now of now. Be my God to prove to the world that whom you wear is whom you are and for my sake shall be. This is my time. Tap your chest. Say, this is my time. What you did for Abraham what you did in the time of Isaac, what you did in the time of Jacob, now that it is my time, improve on it. 
Oka pa ma shoko sherele. Ora mahaka shoko. God improve, improve on whom you used to be. Don't die in my time. I told the Council of Church of God Mission, where I'm privileged to be senior pastor. I said we inherited nothing, but we established something. And God told me, what I used you to establish will not die in your time, but in your time. In your time. In your time. Whatever you used me to start will not end with me. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. What is in my hand? Come on, brother. Come on, sir. There are, come on. That handsome man, follow him. Four of you line up here. Thank you. You be the last man, sir. You. In a relay, there are no four buttons. How many do you have? I say, how many do you have? If this man start the race, pull it. Have you ever run before? Okay. If he start the rain and, and finish, please be seated so you can see them. This is the anchor man. You understand what I'm saying? If he finish his lap, finish your lap. Finish your lap. If this man didn't give it to him, let's do this. Come forward. Let it shake and fall. No matter how much energy this man put in the race, if he didn't get to the winning point with a button in his hand, he lost the race. He's not the loser of the race, but the man in whose hand the button dropped. If the power of God dropped in your time, your generation will regret that you were born. Pick it up! Quickly! Give it to him! Don't let it fall in your hand! Go ahead! Come on, pursue him! Give him back! Come on! 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 Come on, man of God! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! This way! This way! Come on! This way! Come on! Come on! We made it! 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 The gospel! The gospel will not lose its power in our time. Let it be known today. There is God in the church. God is tired of religious celebrators. God is tired. Come on, come on, come on. Hold him, hold him, hold him. Hold him, hold him. Come on. Jesus did more than that at the cross. That is not all that Jesus died for. He 
he didn't die for you to fall. He died that you may rise up. Somebody shout hallelujah. He didn't die. So you can laugh. <laughs> Jesus died for more than that. He didn't die so you can have religious celebration. He died so that when you pass the street, Peter, I touch your clothes. My eyes opened. Oh. Peter, I'm lame. Hey, I touch you. Now I'm healed. Hey, I'm so glad I was weak. When you passed me, I became strong. That is the gift to the church. Jesus didn't die so we can jump seven times. Jesus didn't die so that a black man can become white or so that a white man can become red. He died that our body, soul, and spirit may change. Somebody say hallelujah. The baton, the baton must not fall in your hand. Paul gave it to Peter. Peter gave it to Idahosa. Idahosa gave it to Gary. Gary must give it to someone. So that when our generation aspires, those coming behind us will say, we've never seen it in this fashion. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, and to the poor, Pakamoso, the gospel is preached. That is the good news. Not when you come from service. How was it? I fell four times. Oh. You fell blind. You got up blind what are you falling for how was the service brother i was on the floor for five hours so when you got up what happened <laughs> oh. <laughs> if that is why jesus died his blood was shed in vain it's more than that he died and rose that the church might hold to captivity principalities and powers. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Let it be known. Come and see. Before you go to your seat. That it, that it might let it be known. When? This day. That thou art God. Somebody said this day. That's why I'm here. If I was looking for who to preach to, I have at least seven million members. But I came that today, you will go home and say, I have a God who is not dead, but alive. And the wind of change is about to blow. I don't care your past experience. In disharmony, setback, suffering, poverty, deprivation, this day it shall be made known that there is God in your life. Someone say hallelujah. That's his first prayer. All right. Thank you. And that I am your servant. And that I have done according to your word. Verse 37. Hear me, Kamayoko. Lord, 
hear me. Everybody say that. Say it again. Start it as it is in the Bible. Hear me. Lord, hear me. He didn't say, hear us. Our God is good, but it's only my God who supplies your need. I, I, I pray you hear what I'm saying. Hear me! Say that, everybody. Hear me, hear me oh God. Hear me, oh God. Not hear us. There must come time in your belief when you outgrow our God to my God. I wish somebody's hearing what I'm saying. Our God is good, but my God is better. Our God is good for you, but my God is better for me. Hear me? Say that. Hear me again. Oh Lord. Hear me. Hear me. Again. Oh Lord. That these people may know. That. Thou. Art. The Lord. God. And that. Thou. Hast. Turned. Your heart. Back. Again. Shout hallelujah. I told Pastor Faye, the reason Dr. Gary Weston has been my friend, son, co-laborer in unbroken relationship these many years. So that he has listening ears and hearing ears. He's a man that said, God, Anything you have for my life, help me to discover it. Make me a plus to my generation, not a minus. First time we came in contact with one another, I said, Brother, if you want to be an American preacher, hi. But if you are going to be a gospel preacher, let's go. Because whether you're an African preacher or an American preacher or a British preacher, you have your tradition. But when you are a gospel preacher, you have power. Let me now ask you a question. Your tradition and your power and power, which one do you need? Jesus didn't say, behold, I give you tradition. What did he say I give you? To do what? To tread upon something, to cast out devil. Your tradition can only relegate you. Religion helps you to be decent. But gospel helps you to help other people. Oh God, put that down for me. When you are religious, you don't steal. When you are religious, you don't tell lie. When you are religious, you don't commit adultery. But when you are a Christian, you heal the sick. You bless the poor. You cast out devil. You raise the dead. Now your neighbors give thanks to God that you live. Religious people are decent people. But Christians are godly people. i rather be a helper of the poor than to be so good for my family. And useless to my generation. Somebody say hallelujah. That these people may know. That's my prayer Lord. That should be your desire. Verse 39. And when all the people saw it. They fell on their faces. And they said. The Lord he is the God. The Lord he is the God. If we cease to demonstrate whom God is, 
our generation will diminish for whom God is. We must not only turn the people to the church, we must turn them to God. I came from a city called the city of blood. Witches and wizards were the owners of the town. I came from the country when in those days, nearly 60 years ago, it takes up to 9 o'clock for the sun to touch down because of the trees and dark shadow was the power of darkness. But when God raised me nearly 40 years ago, he said, I raised you for this purpose, to take them from darkness to light, to take them from where is God to this is God. And God told me, don't wait for someone else. Don't say there are churches in America say there is God in Delaware. Can I hear you say hallelujah? Our God is good. But I thank God for my God. The God who can touch man in the totality of his life need is the God I'm serving today. I took my country by the grace of God. When we got independent 36 years ago, Nigeria was 47% Islamic, 21% Christianity. 36 years later, Nigeria is 52% Christian. Oh God Almighty. I say, Oh God Almighty. Today, my city that was the city of blood sacrifice of human beings, this morning, out of eight out of every ten human beings in my city have gone to church. Let me hear you say hallelujah. We must not only paint the picture of a beautiful Christ, we must show the world of a healing Christ, a deliverer, a baptizer with Holy Ghost and power. Human beings are not looking for religious people. They are looking for real people who know whom their God is. And a whole nation turned to God when one man turned from religious activity to godly events. This is the church God raised here. To show the people that there is God in this land. How did this miracle happen? The Bible used the word after the evening offering and sacrifice. If you want your nation to change, there must be givers of offering and men and women that make sacrifice for a change. What is sacrifice? What I have no ability to do joyfully, but do it happily. May I repeat that? Offering is, now it's time for offering. Then we clap our hand. I have $20, I give God five. Sacrifice is, I have $20, but God is looking for 100 What What will 100 do? 100 will cause fire to come down from heaven. What will $5 do? $5 will help us to clean the altar plate. But $100 can send men to the world to preach the gospel. If you want your life to become a radiant light, you must grow above offering to sacrifice. You must not only give your tithe and offering you must give your time and your life. Because many times, your offering is not as good as your life. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Anytime you go to restaurants and you order omelet, that's an offering. But when you order bacon, that's a sacrifice. Hey! 
How many of you have ever eaten chicken this week? Or meat? Any meat? Have you ever eaten meat this week? Any meat? Have you eaten meat since Monday? That's a sacrifice. Did you hear me? I have a signboard I put in the church. My wife saw it since 1972. If Christ be God and he died for me, no sacrifice is too much for me to make for him. When will the church change to begin to see miracles? When will the church change to begin to see the dead raised, not just by pastors and evangelists, but by members? When she starts to give sacrificially, when she begins to set new goals, when a man from Philadelphia will say, Pastor Gary, I was sleeping last night, but God disturbed me and said we should go open a church in Philadelphia. When, when the members begin to come, when the prayer women of the church come and say, Pastor, I couldn't sleep last night. I heard a call from Baltimore. We need a church in Baltimore. When the members of the church begin to come and say, Pastor, we went for open air last night. Ten blind men saw. Eight prostitutes want to join the choir. Oh, 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 you, you say, in the house, please, don't let prostitutes come to our choir. Well, you were not saved as a prostitute, but you were saved as a sinner. I told God, and this took a long time for my wife to agree with me. I said, God, don't let me pastor a holy church that was never in sin. She said, what do you mean? I said, I want my church to be full of sinners. But when they get inside, they become saints. And if this church is going to grow, she must stop looking for good people. She must look for drunkards that will become preachers. Someone say hallelujah. Now, the same woman that queried me 25 years ago. Why are you bringing prostitutes to the church? They will stain your name. I said, let them soil it. I don't want them to stain me. I want them to soil it. She said, but that we got to put your reputation down. I said, I have none. Because everybody in town, they ask me, who are you? I said, I'm Benson Idahosa. But now, 25 years later, how are you, sir? From who are you to how are you? Now, in my city, governors count it an honor to shake my hand. Kings count it an honor for me to visit them. In the past, when I say, Governor, can I see you next month? They say, call my secretary. Maybe next year. But now, the God of Abraham, Komahakasoke! Somebody say hallelujah. And this reminds me of what I have testified about several early. 1962. 35 years now, by last January. I went to a bank to open an account with five dollars. Savings. I, so, I prospered so much in my job that I have five dollars I didn't need and I thought of opening bank account. Now I opened the account and they gave me passbook. And somebody told me that whenever I needed money, I should go to the bank with that little book and they'll give me cash. So I, after three months, I was told that the money will yield interest. So I thought in three months, my five dollars would become ten. So I went to the bank to ask for three dollars. So I could have seven more out of the five that I put in. When I got there by ten o'clock in the morning, they gave me number, number 136. That means there are 135 people to be attended to before it's my turn. No computer, 
No nothing. So I lined up outside at 10 o'clock in the morning. And my bank closes at 2. At 10 minutes to 2. There was 12 people before me. At 5 minutes to 2, there are 5 people before me. And out of the 5 before me, 3 were so angry that they stayed so long and they left. So there was one man more before me at 1 minute to 2. And the person was called. When he was paid his $6, the cashier said to me, Mr. Benson? I said, yes, sir. He said, you are going to come back tomorrow. Money finished. I said, pardon? He said, money has just finished. You need to come back tomorrow. I wept and I wept and I wept and I wept. And on that line, God said, Now that you are my child, You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to stand in the line for four hours I wept home I held the passbook heavy in my hand with nothing in my pocket three days time I came I left home at 6 30 so I can be have a large number early number by 7 30 I left home by 8 o'clock the bank opened I was number nine by 11 o'clock they gave me the three dollars and I looked at the interest. Nothing yet. I have two dollars left. So the next day I went back to pay two back. So I can have four. And after 15 years of banking with the same bank, I came in one day to pay in 10,000 in the same bank and they asked me not to line up for the come inside when I came inside they said sit down at the accountant's table and they asked me tea or coffee and I said both of them why because I've stayed 15 years outside and I never knew you could get coffee in the bank now that you're asking me tea or coffee, both of them. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Now the same bank, the senior manager, is a Sunday school teacher in my church. I don't go to bank anymore. I called them and said, bring me 50,000. Bring me 100,000. They bring it because I came from the back to the front. Let it be known today. Somebody said this day. Let it be known that I'm your servant in Jesus' name. Say amen. After the experience of the sacrifice, Elijah heard from God that a new wind was about to blow. Look at verse 41. Get your Bible. You have it there. You may read it for me in American language. And Elijah, take one of the microphones, said unto Ahab, Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Somebody stand up and say, I hear a sound. I hear a sound. I said, get up say, I hear a sound. I hear a sound. Of abundance. Of abundance. Of rain. Of rain. Everybody get up say, I hear a sound. Yeah, I hear a sound. Of abundance. Of abundance. Of rain. Of rain. In my job. In my job. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. In my marriage. In my marriage. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. In my home. In my home. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. In my city. In my city. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. In my ministry. In my ministry. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. In my bank account. In my bank account. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. In my home. In my home. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. In every situation. In every situation. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. Of abundance. Of abundance. Of rain. Of rain. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. What sound are you hearing? Abundance of rain. What sound are you hearing? What sound are you hearing? In your bank account, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of rain. Oh, no, 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 no. In Abundance your bank money. account, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of money. In your sick body, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of healing. In your marriage, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of fulfillment. In your own job, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of promotion. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. Where, where there was darkness, what sound are you hearing? Light. Abundance of what? Light. Abundance of what? Light. Where there was drought, what are you hearing? Abundance of water. Where there was shortage, what sound are you hearing? Abundance. Where there was shortage, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of provision. Abundance of what? Provision. Where there was debt, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of increase. Oh God. Where there was fear, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of faith. Where there was downcast, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of lifting. Where there was doubt, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of belief. Where there was nothing, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of God. Where there have been no bread, what sound are you hearing? Abundance of bread. What is your God telling you he's going to do for you? He's the God of abundance that will do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think according to the power that works in me. Is there anybody hearing a sound? Is there anybody yes! hearing a sound? Is there anybody hearing a sound? I believe this message is blessing you. 
please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. something to us. I said God is going to give you a miracle. God. God wants to take his church from zero to surplus. God who brought your life back to God who brought your pieces back. God, the potter of the new you. He took the clay. He melted it. He turned it. And put you back to the mold. To make a new you out of the past. He has sent me to tell you that which he did in the past taking you from darkness to light was the beginning of your standing by your new conviction that the old days are gone a new day is here. That you can reach your hand to God and say, here am I. Do what you choose with my life. I'm willing to follow you all the days of my life. Hallelujah. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. Your past is gone. The new you have come. A new man has emerged. I hear a sound. 
that you should not remember the past. But reach your hand together to God with your wife. I say, Lord, whatever you choose to do with us, we are willing to do it. I hear a sound of the abundance of the grace of God in your life. I hear a sound. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You from this day become an instrument of honor in the hand of God. Thank you, Lord. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. Everybody say, I hear a sound. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. Ahab. There's a new wind about to blow. Ahab. Ahab. I hear a sound. There is a sound of abundance. We have heard so much sound. But the sound has been the sound of obscurity. We've heard so many sounds. It has been the sound of disaster. But here is a prophet sent to you today to tell you your yesterday's maximum will become your today's minimum. I hear a sound. Somebody say hallelujah. Look at the 42nd verse. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Any man that hears sound doesn't go below. He goes up and God is about to promote victory, Christian center, here to a new height of mountain up. In the year of new beginning. God told me that 1996 is a year of new beginning. Your health, new beginning. Your job, new beginning. Your promotion, new beginning. Your lifting, new beginning. Say with me, it's my year of new beginning. This is my year of new beginning. This is my year of new beginning. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. My darkness is over. My darkness is over. My light has come. My light has come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I hear a sound. And he went up. Hear this. And he cast himself down upon the earth. And put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, Come. Go. Up. Now. Look. Toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Hmm. What do you do when you expect positive result and you get negative answer? Remember, what the man of God said was, Go look and see. Hear this. Hear this. Look at your Bible. Go look toward the sea. And he went up. He went up and looked and said, There's nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. One negative result should not cancel your seven positive answers. I hear a sound. Not what I expected. Is the news you bring. Your servant must not determine your result. That's right. That's right. If you cannot see, you shouldn't close your eyes. If you cannot hear, you should not deafen your ears. Your servant does not have the answer. Right. But send him back again until his glossy eyes become bright eyes. Send your servant again. Your servant this morning could be your faith. Mm. Hear me. It could be your reasoning faculty. Dr. Margaret, put that down. Your servant could not, cannot only be a visible servant. It could be your reasoning in your heart. Yeah. I look first. My eye servant see nothing. Yeah. I look second time. My eyes, ear, my ear servant saw, heard nothing. Mm. 
I look again, my heart, my heart, seven, breathe. No result. Mm. What I see does not cancel what I hear. My God. My God. I wish somebody heard what I say. What I'm seeing now yeah. is not a cancellation of what I heard. I hear a sound. Even though you don't see the result of what you heard, the physical evidence of what you see should not cancel your faith proof that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is on your side. Somebody shout big hallelujah. Hallelujah. How will I become a mountain climber and a valley filler when I begin to make sacrifice to God? My generation will begin to look at me and say, you used to have that yellow suit. Where did you get the green you wore last week and the brown you are wearing today? What happened? You were having one shoe with three holes at the bottom. Why are you wearing the skin of sacrifice? Of that sacrifice. Yeah. Somebody laid down their life for you to live. Right. Can I hear you say hallelujah? What has happened that God took you from obscurity to prosperity? It is when you make evening sacrifice and give God your best in the face of your worst. Best in the face of your worst. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. A man who loves you will tell you you are not as small as you are. But the man who hates you will tell you you are not as big as you think. Mm. Mm. Write it. A man that hates you will tell you you are not as big as you think. <laughs> A man who hates you will tell you you are not as big as you think. But the man who loves you will tell you you are not as small as you think. A man who hates you will tell you if you have twenty dollars, give it to the Lord. The man who loves you will say, Look for five thousand. You say, I have twenty dollars. God is not going by what you see, God is going by what you hear. The same prophet told the woman, Do you say this is the last food? Yes, sir. Do you say when you eat it? You will kill your son. She was going to prepare killing food. Mm. For she said, if we eat it, we will die. That's what she said. That means that food was going to bring death and not life. You don't need a wife that will kill your son. You don't need a faith that will kill you. So the prophet said, those who want to die don't need food. I want to leave. Make for me first. How many of you can say hallelujah? hallelujah? Make for me before you die. Anybody who is about to die doesn't need food. You die quicker when you are hungry. So give it to me because I want to live. Somebody say hallelujah. So, listen to this. Go, say to yourself, I will try seven times more. Try seven times. Open your mouth. Tell them what I said, Pastor. I will go back and try seven times more. Say it again. I will go back and try seven times now more. Now say it with him. Say it with him. I will go back and try seven times more. If it didn't work first. If it didn't work first. I would go back. I will go back. Try it. Try it. Seven times. Seven times. I will not say. I will not say. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. I will not accept. I will not accept. A no. No. For an answer. For an answer. My God told me. My God promised me. Rain is coming. Rain is coming. Blessing is coming. Blessing is coming. Wagons are coming. Wagons are coming. Wagons are coming. I remember now. Prosperity is coming. Prosperity is coming. Abundance is coming. Abundance is coming. More than enough is coming. More than enough is coming. I hear a sound in my ears. I hear a sound in my ear. My sight. My sight. Will not. Will not. Cancel. Cancel my hearing. My hearing. Say that to them to hear. My sight will not cancel my hearing. Try it again twice, Pastor. My sight will not cancel my hearing. 
Preach it for two minutes. Preach it for two minutes. What you see when you hear from God and what is evidence does not stop God from doing what He said to you. When will you open your eyes after go hearing ahead, from ahead, God? Go ahead, go ahead, nothing you see has power to stop the God who spoke it. God does not use what you see to do what He said He's going to do. He uses His Word that He spoke to you and He makes what you see change. So what you hear is more than what you see. Shout hallelujah! Tell God I got ears to hear. I got ears to hear. And tell your sight. Say sight. Sight? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I believe what I hear. I believe what I hear. And I'll see what I hear. And I will see what I hear. Whether I got to go back seven times. Whether I'm going to go back seven times. I'll go back. I go back. And 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 I'll see. And I will see. The seventh time. The seventh time. What I've heard. Will I hear. Go ahead and shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Listen to my Bible. Listen to my Bible. Listen to my Bible. Listen to my Bible. And it came to pass. Say with me what I hear. What I hear. We come to pass. We'll come to pass. What I hear. What I hear. We come to pass. We'll come to pass. At the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little commando hekebo hakakoso cloud. Out of the sea, like a man's hand. Dr. Gary, this is the time. Everything that lay down. If we call it once, it refused to resurrect. Call it twice. If we call it twice, and it refused to resurrect, call it three times. If we call it three times, and it refused to resurrect, call it four times. Say to everything that lay low in your life, arise. Some of the money God sent to you is lying low. But I hear a sound. 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 There arise that man of God. Read it in American English. Verse 45. Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up. Say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. Listen, Pastor. It was there, but it didn't rise. When our faith stands on what we hear, faith will force what heed come forth. And it's not your hand that will quicken it. We must constantly expect from our state and situation of oblivion lacks deprivation setback threatening frightening expect a rising hand like the hand of man but it is the hand 
of God. Don't you think, excuse me, you preach it for one minute now. Don't you think time has come that devil should take his hand away and a new hand come out? You have been hearing long enough the voice of the Spirit of God inside of your heart. You don't need to hear again what God has said to you. It is now time for you to go again and again and again and begin to make a mandate on the hearing ear in your spirit and see the hand of God begin to rise and begin to rise and begin to rise and you begin to know that the God that you've heard is the God of now doing what He promised you in the here and now and everything the enemy has done is canceled by the God that is risen in the power of His resurrection as He lifts His hand. The God of heaven raises His power and looses what you heard. Somebody say, Yes, Lord! Yes. Everybody say, Yes, Lord! Yes. I hear the sound, sound of abundance of, abundance of rain. rain. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah! Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Oh God of heaven. Stand to your feet. God of heaven. Please stand to your feet. If you don't need that, your walking stick, you throw it away. But hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Join hand with somebody on your left and right. Let your faith back somebody. Let your faith support somebody. Let your faith support somebody. Let you join your hands seriously. Let fire begin to transmit from your body. Let light begin to pass from your body. Let the anointing flow from your hand to another man's hand. Let healing come right now. Transcend that glory. Transform life. Do a miracle for somebody now. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We release. We release. Faith. We release. Power. We release. Life. We release. Joy. We release healing. We release anointing. And in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Thank you Lord. For doing a new work. In our time. For your praise and glory. In the fullness of your power. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Open your mouth and glorify God. Open your mouth and glorify God. We bless your Lord. We give you praise. We magnify your name, Most High. El embrazo tora macara no nos tora macaye. Bless you, Lord. We give you honor and glory. We magnify your name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold that hand. Don't clap it yet. Hold it with somebody. Hold it with somebody. Open your eyes and look at me. Open your eyes and look at me. Listen to me. Listen to me. There are people changers on this earth. There are community changers on this earth. There are city changers on this earth. There are state changers on this earth. And there are few world changers. Who are those who become world changers? They are those who were once in the lowest pit who suddenly saw a hand that takes from the ground and lifts to the top. That's what you need in your family a lifting hand to your marriage. A lifting hand to your business. Once that hand touched you, it touched Margaret and I. It touched Chiel and Daisy Osborne. It has touched Gary and Faye Weston. It touched Ora and Evelyn Roberts. That hand touched Sarah and Abraham. The good news is it can be done today. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
the good news is, I am that I am. I change not. The good news is, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. The good news is, no matter how seeming small, the cloud looks like when it rises. A great rain is coming. To your finances, I hear a sound of abundance of money. You must be the one to tell yourself, Faith, why didn't you see anything? Go. First time. Go. Second time. Go. Third time. Go. Fourth time. Go. Fifth time. Go. Sixth time. Go. The seventh time. When you come back the seventh time, the God that gives people turn around. a turnaround is going to give you an eye. A turnaround. Turn around say, I have a turnaround. My God will give me a turnaround. In everything I do, I'm expecting a turnaround. I'm expecting a turnaround. Hallelujah! Give the Lord a shout of victory. Hallelujah! I said, give the Lord a shout of victory. Hallelujah! Say hallelujah! Hallelujah! All right, now listen to me. Sometimes you don't hear this sound early. Listen to this. Listen to this. The Lord told my wife and I, 1973, March 23rd, He told me, From now, give me nine out of everything ten I give you. I went home and I told my wife, Honey, the Lord said, Out of every ten dollars, we'll give him nine. She said, Pardon? I said, the Lord says from now, every ten dollars, we should give him nine. He says that to me again, I said, pardon me? I said, depart? Not a pardon, but depart? He said, what did you say? I said, God said, we should give him nine dollars. He said, no problem, tell him to kill us. I will send him. I can't tell them. You tell him. Please tell them what I said. Do you think you said me? You hear what I said? Have you heard what I said? I said, tell God to kill us. Tell God to kill us. He's going to take $9 out of 10. Tell him to kill us. Yeah. If he's going to take $9 out of my hand, out of the 10 I've got, tell God to kill us. I said, you would be better to tell him by yourself. You would be better to go to God and tell him for yourself. I can't tell him. I heard what he said. I heard. He didn't tell you. I heard. That night, we had four months of it in our hands. Because he gave me nine out of ten. When she said, tell him to kill us. I almost said, he shouldn't kill you, but I can kill you. I hear a sound. Nine out of ten. I left her in the room with the baby, who is now a medical student. Somebody say hallelujah. Feb is 23 years old. And he had three degrees with master's. In medical field. I went to another room and I said, God, why did I tell her what you said? And now she can't believe what you said. He said, Go back, tell her, if I don't give you ten, you don't owe me nine. Tell them what I said, they hear you. 
He said that if God does not give him ten, he does not owe God nine. That's what God told him. That's what God told him. God said, if I don't give you ten, you don't owe me nine. So if I ask you to give me nine of ten, I have to give you ten first. And the only way you will see ten is to believe first that God will give you ten. And the only way you can see it is to plant your seed first before you expect a harvest. Yeah. Some of you say, God, if you give me ten, I give you nine. I want to reap before I sow. Yeah. Yeah. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't reap until you sow. So I said, God, I went to her. I said, honey, can I talk to you again? She said, what did God say again? I said, he asked me to tell you until he give us ten. We don't owe him nine. And as the Lord told me that night, May 2010, that is something to Not only that one of the ten will feed you and your wife. You have cars. You have lands. You have houses that you can't number. And your children, children will never suffer if you obey what I say. How many can say amen to that? So I said, God, I said, honey, where do we have any money in the house? What I heard is clear. We went to my room and I found twenty dollars. I gave God eighteen. The next service, I kept two. My salary up to that time, Church of God Mission have just promoted me from six dollar to ten, from ten to twenty. After, after. <laughs> many years they gave me a scale of fifty dollar per month and i gave god i gave god 45 i took five that month first time a missionary preacher from england called Parkins, he sent me a check for two hundred dollars i said not for the ministry but for you and your wife. I took the letter to my wife. I said, excuse me, you still want to die? <laughs> she said, no. I said, you should die because you told me to tell him to kill you. She said, I will no more doubt God. Now, she raises hundreds of thousands for women's work. My wife now go to prostitute. See them the way Jesus sees them. She doesn't laugh at them anymore. She ministers to them. She said, God hates your sin, but he loves you. She meets drunkards and I said, God doesn't love drinking, but he loves the drunkard. He died for you. Now, 23 years later, Dr. Weston, 23 years later, we have houses, when I ask my chauffeur now, bring the car out, he will say, which of them? Are you ready to see a God of miracle? Sit down. Give me five more minutes. Give me five minutes and we will finish. I have proved God in every area of my life. Without gainsaying, I'm the only man of my skin, like, only you know my color, but I know my God. I know I'm made in the image and likeness of God. It depends on the state of your eye, so you can describe what I am. But I'm a child of God. I'm the only man that looks like me, in skin, that have traveled to 143 countries. 143 countries in 25 years. I'm the only man that looks like me that have raised nine people from the dead, pronounced dead. I'm the only man that looks like me that have invested more to the ministry. I have preached to more whites than any black alive. And I've preached to more blacks than any white alive. 
because I hear a sound of a turnaround. It depends on what your ear is hearing. If you hear poverty, you will hear it in abundance. If you are hearing prosperity, you will hear it in abundance. But I hear the sound of abundance. Tune your ear from FM failing ministry to faith ministry. What is the other channel? AM absent minded to abundant minded. Can I hear you say amen? It's the same AM. One is absent. One is abundant. One is faith. One is failure. I tune my radio to faith channel. And I tune my radio to abundant channel. And now, now, after 23 years of giving God, 9 out of 10, Pastor Gary and Sister Faye can tell you, we have invested over 300 million U.S. dollars in the ministry in 23 years. From zero to surplus. Because of that, a journalist in my city just wrote a book about my life. From trash to treasure. I have only few. If you give them $20, I will sign it. If I don't sign it, God will sign it and you read it. It will show you how a man that was born 58 years ago and dumped to garbage heap has now seen more president, more prime ministers, more kings than any living being of my type of skin. I change my skin to my skill and I change my color to my calling. And God took me from obscurity to prosperity. And God took me from zero to surplus. Because I hear the sound of abundance. Of rain. I left home. I told God. Sacrifice is the word I heard. I'm going to give 300 people challenge of sacrifice. This morning and this evening. You say, that I don't have it. When God told me to give him 9 of 10, I didn't have it. But when I tried it, I proved him. Malachi 3.10 didn't say try me, say prove me. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Ewo Media Services. Ewo Media Services, inspirational, world-class production. can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was Idausa's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's Chief Igbinidion, had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preaching, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. 
in Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people, that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. It was an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Nidahosa university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis who went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. 
So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane will lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idausa. We say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, Yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believe in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign, wonder, anointing, and his boldness. I was. I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010, and just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, "Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world." Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, 
and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland and when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past and people were crying in my house. What's up? <laughs> And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> and he said, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. See, this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you, don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, I, I, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. I said what? Am I waiting on a job? Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes, in the name of Jesus. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. 
So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Early in the morning when I rise. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What is the girl's name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the outside. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, the God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock slays. Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> Child, 
with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power, super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that have no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed and he did this and you know when i finished prayer there was an abundant joy unspeakable joy in my spirit and the following day uh we, we used to call him brother benson he came I said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside. And I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. He said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer. And that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two guys, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. Inu me gata gi Jesu me gu wesi Inu me gata Inu me ga jebe Inu me gata gi Jesu me gu wesi Inu me gata gu wesi You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly 
nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, 
Will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto evangelism, our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world 
with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as a black African he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985 he established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa, who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is, in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appear on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to African as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. 
He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth he got converted to christianity by a certain pastor Paul, and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members he was very active and converting many to christianity after experiencing a revelation from god calling him into ministry he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quote, quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Graham Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world and I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord I am honored to be a part of his anointing a part of his of his ministry I want to ask you please make sure you share these videos this video this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, 
and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contacts get to know about Anointed You. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again. I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.